it's like that inner voice that you have uh, you know in you that constantly criticizes you <laughs> that's your frontal lobe like or, or being over no, that, that voice i hear it from jason all the time yeah so it's not inside I, of I, it's I was your gonna, frontal lobe or I, was jason. Say, I know my source <laughs> is stress um, today we're going to talk about stress yeah and uh, that is a prevalent topic a study surveys show that over 70 percent of adults report feeling stressed daily well yeah and you know we're surgeons so uh we live, op- we live in stress. We live in stress. We right. We thrive in stress. So, so we operate in the brain, which is not stressful at all, like most of you understand. <laughs> uh, and and so uh, with us is uh, Dr. Simeon Missius, a good friend and uh, neurosurgeon. We work together at the Stroke and Brain Aneurysm Center of Long Island. Hello. And uh, hello, welcome. Uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about stress. Um, and, and so, uh, first of all, you know, s- stress is really a response, a healthy response of the of the human body right um the reason folks get stressed is i think developmentally that was your response to when you were uh under duress under yeah. threat right <laughs> yeah uh and evolutionary evolutionarily exactly and so when you're under threat you have that your body gets ready to fight or flight yeah. and that's exactly the response but there's the healthy amount of stress and obviously there is the unhealthy amount of stress and uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit we kind of set the tone of how we're stressed on our everyday lives <laughs> and you know we, we deal with brain aneurysms brain tumors other uh, life-threatening diseases stroke which is time sensitive you know we trip over each other trying to take a clot out of somebody's brain try to save their life and and so um maybe i'll ask simeon first you, you know how, how do you how do you deal with that with that uh, response from your body so that it doesn't overwhelm you and you're still able to perform at the top of your abilities to, to save somebody's life, take out a brain tumor or to, to clip a brain aneurysm. Yeah, the um, I think stress is related a lot to overthinking. Right. Uh, and the, uh, you know, you hear about uh, athletes or artists that, uh, you know, they can do wonderful things and you ask them like, how did you do this? And, and they cannot tell you. Uh, and a lot of times they say that they kind of shut their brain down uh, to get into that. Uh, some people call this the flow state. Right. Um, and it is actually, uh, there's neuroscience that shows that this is actually related to uh, um, uh, less activity in your frontal lobe. Mm-hmm. Helps you enter this flow state. It's like that inner voice that you have, uh, you know, in you that, constantly criticizes you <laughs> that's your frontal lobe like or, or being over no, that, that voice i hear it from jason all the time yeah so it's not I, inside I, of I, I was your gonna, frontal lobe or i was jason. gonna say i know my source of stress <laughs> um, <laughs> so so yeah so the you, obviously you need to be before a stressful case obviously you need to plan it and you need to know you need to have a strategy you need to know what you'll be up against uh and then you just go in and do it it's uh if you're constantly questioning yourself uh, you're not going to do as well but when you have a uh, like a, a, a stressful day what do you do to unwind well that's different yes so it's it's important to so you don't want to be stressed all the time no so you want to break no, that no no you, it's right. important to uh recharge essentially yeah. right and, and you know when 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 simon is talking about surgery right i think we all find um balance and solace in our colleagues so for example uh, it's much easier for me to tell him what to do with the case than uh, for me to tell myself what to do with the case so often i would go to him in a challenging case and say um, you know what would you do here it's not you know if, if you were to ask me in an academic way of course i would tell you it's not that we don't know it's the fact that everybody uh, needs that um, that support validity. and that comfort and validity yeah, in their you, decisions. You're bouncing right? the ideas off of somebody yes. you trust. Right, if it's a challenging case. And and so that happens very, very frequently. Uh, and uh, when it comes to doing the case, you know what I often tell people that, you know, we train younger people all the time and we have new colleagues and new partners and you see them struggle sometimes. And what I say is don't think. Uh, and when I say don't think, it doesn't mean be willy-nilly in what you do. But, but don't overanalyze, like you said, don't overthink it. And especially in diseases that we treat on an everyday basis, like stroke, what's very helpful is protocolized care, mm-hmm. you know? And at the end of the day, you have to remember, we didn't, um, we didn't come to the stage of where we are today without training and without um, uh, 
profound understanding of, of disease, right? And so we've trained for several years, uh, some of us over a decade in, in these particular things that we do. And when, when that happens, when you stop thinking over analyzing, you revert back to your training, you revert back to what you uh, are very comfortable doing and, and you uh, always excel if obviously you're well trained. Well, one of our uh, mentors gave us the good advice of you're not reinventing the wheel. Right. You, <laughs> right. The, the we all know this guy. Place. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I think he was right. The more, the older we get, we kind of see how wise he was. We see his wisdom a lot. In many in, ways. <laughs> in, in many, in many, many ways. Uh, but, uh, but certainly um, not, not, spending too much uh, time over analyzing what you're going to do. Of course, before you gain, get into a case, have a plan. Think about what you're going to do. Have a backup plan, right? Because because preparation is important. We're not talking about not being prepared. Not being prepared is a recipe for disaster. But prepare and that's it. Prepare, it's enough. And then you can rely on your skill set to get uh, to get the case executed. And, and that's where I see that we are the most successful in handling stress, at least in the operating room. But then, of course, you know, uh, we have to unwind yeah, because, you know, press. because being at a high level of stress all, all the time will lead to chronic stress. And chronic stress is what leads then to other issues, uh, mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, other issues in your life. Um, and yeah, uh, anger, anger, uh, conflict. Uh, I mean, you, you and mean, it's not uncommon for surgeons to exhibit right. those. Well, their, no, uh, no, never. <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah, high level stress is exhausting, and it takes a toll on you, and it takes a toll on the brain, uh, and it can affect your interpersonal relationships. You're also dealing with end of life situations. You're dealing with people that are very sick. So sometimes it's hard to go back home and talk about what cereal you're going to buy, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it, it just seems so mundane. Soldiers, you know, people that are, uh, you know, P PTSD is common, that, right? that are out, they do tours of duty and they come back, uh, they come back home. They, f they find it hard kind of just getting, uh, yet we do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, but yet, yet, we yet we do it every day, you know, you'll be day. So you need to. You'll be exactly you'll be in the operating room. Well. You'll take out a brain tumor, then you'll do a stroke, um, and uh, then then you'll do something else. You'll try to save somebody's life from a big, say, car accident, trauma. You know things are not going to go well for that person because of the extent of the injury. But then when you're done and you walk out of that hospital, you have to be able to handle that stress. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that stress will consume you. What uh, what's your favorite activity that numbs your mind from stress and you relax? Okay, get personal. <laughs> I think no. I think I think I know what it no, is. No, I mean f I, for me, it's uh, you know reading. Uh, I love to play video games. That kind of you shut your brain and you get transported somewhere else. And I love to fish. I just, thought I thought yeah. fishing would come first. I pick yeah. video games. Oh, because uh, <laughs> whenever man, whenever I call fishing seasonal, you yeah, know, whenever fi fishing is seasonal, especially in Long Island. But like, yeah, being out there in the water, it's very relaxing. It's a repetitive activity. You don't really have to think of very hard at least with the kind of fishing i do uh, <laughs> and yeah you recharge I, your battery i think you can outthink a marlin yeah <laughs> um, no, no, that, that's a lot of work <laughs> we're talking about easy fishing so uh, dr beckles i'm gonna put you on the spot what do you like to do um, for me i was about to say uh for me it's cooking typically um and uh things that take a long time a lot of planning for example if you know if you're smoking uh, a brisket or you know you're taking a long time for a cook um, I enjoy planning it, so I put a lot of thought into that, and then I enjoy the execution of it. Um, and that is, uh, you know, that's that's amazing in my head. You know, I, I focus on the fire, and I focus on the next log and what the appropriate log is to put in, and uh, how the mid is progressing, what the temperature is. So I get into the science of it, and that makes me really decompress. And you know, and you just uh, recently got into that too, right? Uh, you know, I would say as, as stress intensified, <laughs> okay. I, I really needed that. Uh, for sure, uh, but yeah, no. For for me, that's that's the biggest thing. Um, cooking, I enjoy doing it, and then I enjoy having you guys home and uh, and feeding you and your families saying, and my family and everybody too. else. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and and so, what advice would you give to a surgeon that's starting on? And uh, everything is very overwhelming, of course, because you know you're maybe not as confident in your technical skills, and that adds another level of stress. And your relationship with uh, your partners, patients, nurses, everything is kind of so new and overwhelming, right? And uh, 
you're very stressed. How how can you cope with this and how do you get into the next phase? Of course, you and I know that this is all temporary and you'll be fine on the other end, but how do you deal with that? And then? Well, there's always stress. Um, right. It's just your ability to deal with it. So one, one good way to think about it is to kind of try and think about why are you stressed? So you may be stressed because you're dealing with a very challenging medical situation, condition. Right. Uh, and in that case, you know, rely on your colleagues, rely on supportive staff and get help, get information from, you know, your surroundings. We, nobody works in, in a vacuum. Or right. We're not. Right. A, we all have egos. We're, we're not all, in a deserted right. island. Yeah. I mean, we you, all pretend that we you know everything. You have but... to put your ego aside and ask for advice. I think that will help decrease your stress level. I think that's uh, that, that validity that, that you mentioned earlier. Right. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. If your source of stress is that you have to be in two places at the same time, which right. we all find ourselves very frequently in, then you sometimes have to say no and uh, change your schedule. Learn how to say no. I still haven't learned how to say no. no several no. years into this, <laughs> it's, it's difficult. It's very difficult. It's extremely difficult. And I would say, if I were to sum that up, um, trust in yourself. Go back to your knowledge and the basics delegate tasks we try and tend to do everything ourselves because we think we're going to do a better job but then that adds stress learn how to say no and set limits um, to how much of your time people can have uh, and use a support system yep. support system is extremely important um, we all need support systems even the most um well uh, trained and and uh, mostly uh, well um, achieved athletes um, have trainers and they have coaches and they tell them how to do and they bounce things off of them and so it's very important to have that that support system and as surgeons this is vital uh, to our survival and of course you know for the general public stress is uh, abundant and you know, especially around the holidays, uh, which is when, when I think this segment is going to mm -hmm. air. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stress related to a lot of factors. But, you know, if you can learn something from us, uh, you know, we, we live in stress. We experience stress in our everyday lives constantly. And we're able to cope with it and perform in a, in a way that allows us to take care of somebody and get them through the toughest time and, uh, and, 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 and treat them. And, and so uh, if, if we can be of of help, I think that these are some very, very useful uh, information and advice that, that Dr. Missios just gave us. Um, you know, find your support system, get into your flow state, say no, set your limits, and at the end of the day, it'll all, all work out. And and I would just add to that: focus on what is important, especially with the holidays coming up. Extremely, you know, focus important. on your relationships with your loved ones, your family. That's what's important, not what kind of wrapping paper you're going to use for the presents. Or That's right. Whether you're going to buy an express present or a cheap present or put a bow on it, or you know, no one will remember that in a year or in two years, and that's not what's important. So. See, I knew Simon was the right person for this segment because he's a philosopher at heart. <laughs> there you go. He loves philosophy. He reads a lot of philosophy and he probably can teach it. All right. So um, thank you, Simeon. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Jason. Yep. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And of course, you can catch us on our website, www.strokecarelongisland.com and subscribe uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, which is at Stroke and Brain Aneurysm Center. Thank you. <laughs>